Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the CSR NET February 2020. Today we will discuss about all those complex analysis questions which was asked in this examination with some shortcut tricks. Myself, Dr. Gurk, working in the School of Mathematics Thapar Institute. You can simply follow this link for finding the various videos on the examinations. So this is the first question which is whose ID is 481 which is asked about here. So what is given to you, this is a non-constant entire function. What is the meaning of the non-constant entire function? It means the function is analytic. So once they are in analytic, then it means they are satisfying the CR equations. So let u and v are the real and imaginary part, which of the following statement is false. So what is a statement? If you read the statement very carefully, which of the following is false? Once they are satisfying the CR equation, what is the meaning of that is ux is nothing but my vy and uy is nothing but my vx. So we will look about these options. The first option is a correct but we need a false statement. So this is, a, is not according to this. uy is, is equal to uy is equal to minus of vx but here is a x. So this is my false statement. So it means that is my right answer. What is that? This is the f dash. So we all know that how you can do the partial derivative, how you can do the derivative of the complex function. This is nothing but my ux plus iota vx. Now you have to take the modulus sign. What is the modulus of this? So this is nothing but my ux square plus vx square. If you take the scaling on both sides, so it will be ux square plus vx square. So it means this is also the correct statement. Look about the last one. This is the u y square. So I can substitute the value of the u x is nothing but the v y. V x is nothing but my u y square. So you can see again, this is the u y square and this is v y. So this is also the correct statement. So the right answer is my b is the correct option for this problem. Look at the another one is there. So f is the rational function of the complex variable here you have to find the radius of convergence of the Taylor series what is given to you this is a here you have to write this in terms of the Taylor series that is a n about z minus here this is the form of this now we all know that how you can find the value of the a n is this is the nth derivative at the point of this divided by n factorial but here we need the radius of convergence that is this one so the first method is you can find the limit over the a n this one or you can take as a a n plus 1 upon a n but there is no need but it is not given to you a n the another way that is what is the shortcut to a case we all know the radius of convergence about this is my center so we know that the radius of convergence is nothing but the center minus their singularity points that is that that is the radius of convergence of the uh, of, of the complex function that is the center minus their singularity so what is the center about that what is the center is my one what is the singularity so you can see this is z is zero is the pole of this given series so this is one minus zero so what is the answer of this is the one is the right answer so there is no need to find the radius of convergence by using this or there is no need to expand this firstly in terms of the Taylor series Simply use this formula z center minus z of the singularity. Look at the another one is there. So if gamma is the positive oriented circle, this is there. Suppose this integration over this gamma here, you have to find the modulus of c. That's a very simple about that. If you look about this circle, the center is my 0, radius is my 3 by 2. So this is my 3 by 2, that is 1.5. Now if you look about that, uh, here is my 1 this is my 2 iota so what is that which one is lies inside so one is lies here so 2 iota is i that is a modulus is 4 so it means the only singularity in this case is my z is 1 so what is that how you can find the value of c c is nothing but my this is my c so this is my c at the point of the singularity that is 1 so i can substitute the value this is e raised to power here 1 minus of this so what is the e raised to power minus pi is 1. This is 1 plus 4 iota square minus of 4 iota. That is minus 1 upon minus of 3. So that is 1 upon 4 iota plus 3. But we need the modulus of c. So what is that? This is nothing but 4 iota plus 3. So which is 1 by 25 is nothing but 1 by 5 is the right answer. 
that's a simple task about this problem look at the another one is there for any complex value function df represent the set of the function which satisfy the cr equations then your target is to find df is equal to c that is a complex plane so that is a very simple about that one when the function f will satisfy the cr equation so there are the two cases the first one is you have to say ux is nothing but my vy and uy is nothing but my minus of vx and another way is you can take the partial derivative of this is my zero so now since it is a part c so it can be more than one options are there so whenever these two conditions are satisfied it means the function f satisfied the cr equations now look about the c part firstly this function is independent of the z complement so it means the here is my zero so what is the meaning of that f is my analytical f is my analytical it means f is my analytical cr equation so it means df is my c so this is the correct option look about this so this is my u this is my v so what is that if i taken as a ux this is my 2x what is the v of x is 0 v of y is my 2y and u of y is my 0 so this condition satisfied but ux is vy this is not satisfied this is satisfied only for the x is equal to y this is only for this so it means df is not equal to c because df is only c for the pair of x comma y such that x is y only here but we need a df is equal to c so it means this option is cancel out similarly for here this is my u so if i consider this partial derivative with respect to x it will be my minus alpha sin of alpha x if i consider this as my v so v of y v of y is my minus alpha sin of alpha y so you can see they are not equal one consists of the x other is y so it means this option is also not true look about this now since it is a form of here either you can write this z in terms of uh, x plus iota y or you can write in terms of Uh, I can write this value as in terms of this also here, or I can write this value as one plus of z into z bar. So now f is my here. This now you can take the partial derivative with respect to their z complement and check whether it's a zero or not. So that's a very simple. So you can simply take the derivative as zero. You can take this value of this and and then so on so after getting this you can see that this will not be a zero after simplify you can see that so this option is also cancel so the right answer of this problem is only c look about the another one is there again this is a part c so this is more than one correct options are there so you have to find the removable singularity pole and then so on there are the two methods are there if you closely look about the function which is nothing in the form of the rational and we all knows that this is the shortcut tricks for you you must remember that it's very useful when you are dealing with the csr net any of the function which is of the form p upon q then it has a pole singular or this if only this satisfied it has a pole if you find the zeros of the numerator if it is as order alpha is as a beta then it has a pole when this condition satisfied what is the definition of the zero so if i say f has a zero too what is the meaning of that that means f is zero f dash is zero f double dash is zero and f triple dash is not zero so if you look about the p what is the p is my sin z i forget about the m so what is the p dash it is nothing but my cos z and we need the value at z is zero so at z is zero what is my p this is zero what is the p dash is is a non zero so what is the meaning of that that means p has zero of order 1 similarly if you look about the q for the numerator that's a 1 minus cos z if you take the q dash is nothing but my sin z and q double dash is my cos z you can see at the point z is zero this value is zero this value is zero this is non zero so what what is the meaning of that is you have to get the root as my 2 so it means t that means my beta is my 2 uh, sorry uh, q is my complete here 
so this has the order 1 the power m is now the order is my m so it means p of m that is alpha is my m q that is a 0 the root of this is my 2 so it's a 2 is my 2 into n that is my 2m so beta is my 2m now you can see the pole when when is the pole when 2m is greater than of the m so that is m is less than 2 so it's a pole that's the correct statement removable singularity when beta that is my 2n is less than equal to m 2n is less than that's a removable singularity that's always true this is false essential singularity whenever the function is analytic this function is analytic it can never be uh, essential singularity so that option is false so the right answer is a and b on this is the shortcut for example another way is how you can do that you can simply simplify this part I can write this part as of sin z by 2 cos z by 2 and the numerator part is 2 sin square z by 2 raised to power n and here is m so I can write this value as 2 minus of n and I can write this value as sin of m minus of 2n and this is cos of m z by 2 now if you look about that at z is 0 this value is my finite you can see that this value is my finite there is no problem about that m is 2n m is so everything is depending on here so when m is greater than of the 2n so this number is my positive that is a numerator so when z is 0 so this value will goes to the 0 this value will goes to the 1 so this is a, my finite so what is the meaning of that it is a removable singularity that's true when m is less than 2n so this value is my negative so once this part is negative so it will be lies in the uh, numerator so once it's a numerator so what is the meaning of that it has a pole so it means this option is also true when m is greater than 2m so this part is positive so it has a zero it's not a pole so this option is cancelled again the similar essential is not be there because it's a analytic so the right answer is a and b so either you can use this shortcut tricks or you can use them as here look at the another one is there so you have the entire function and this condition is given to you you have to find the derivative values at the point zero so firstly what we can do is we will check what is this value what is this value at the point zero so what is that at z is zero so this is zero minus one plus one is less than equal to one plus zero that is a zero is less than one that's satisfied that is satisfied so i can do what i can do is i can consider this number i can consider this number this is a shortcut to x i again tell you so how can do that you can consider any of the number which is satisfied less than one because right hand side is at the point zero because they are talking about the zero this number is my one so you can consider any of the numbers you can consider as a half you can consider as a zero you can consider as a minus half as depending upon you so and then you can find the value of fz from here so for the sake of simplicity i can consider this as a zero so what is that this is nothing but my here now i can substitute the value of ez this upon one factorial z square upon two factorial and then so on divided by z so one will be cancelled out i can take one z is also common so it will be cancelled one upon one z upon two factorial z square upon three factorial and then so on so now it's a polynomial now you can simply see that what is the f dash of zero what is the f dash of zero so this value is one sorry uh, yes this value is zero what is the derivative is zero this value is one by two this is my two z but at the point z is zero is a half so it's minus half so this option is cancelled this option is correct look about the second derivative what is the second derivative of this so the first value is zero this is zero so this is my 2z upon 3 factorial and so on so the next derivative will be my 2 upon 3 factorial so what is that this is minus 1 upon 3 so this option is also 2 this is cancel so the right answer is my b and c so this is the way you can solve this question in a very simple shortcut tricker so you can consider either as a half there is again no problem because if you consider as a half then again the derivative of this will always be 0 so there is no problem about it. So I hope you can simply learn this concept easily. You can watch the previous videos related to the various CSA net. The playlist is here, channel name Dr. Gar, where you can find the various CSA net 20 probability questions, calculation of various here, complex analysis, inner product, 
differential sequence series all are the complete solutions available here up to the 1920 and here till then you can simply like share and comment this video with your friends best of luck students happy learning